Chris here, your favorite plumber in Southern California, sunny Southern California, got my eye protection on, man, if there's one thing I can't stress more on this channel is eye protection, guys, you've got to protect your eyes, man, I mean, you ever heard of a blind plumber, it just doesn't work, you've got to have your eyes, you've got to have your hands if you're a plumber. It's just, it's a must. Okay, so eye protection, always. It's one thing that I'm going to make like a staple of this channel is eye protection. I've come too close to fucking my eyes up too many times. And I feel like if there's anything I can do to help some people in this world, it would be to help them protect their eyes. So I'm Chris, and I stand for eye protection for plumbers. <laughs> Anyways, how you guys doing this morning? Uh, had an interesting call, first call, a uh, bunch of toilet repair, it's weird man, I'm not getting any of the good shit lately, I don't know what's going on, who's getting it, it's not me, anyways, did three toilet repairs on my first call this morning, uh, it was an American Home Shield customer, it was actually pretty comical, and I'm glad I got it, I, next time I'll throw the guy on speaker, um, I'm glad that I got the interaction on camera because you guys will get to see me dealing with one of these American Home Shield people firsthand. I mean, unfortunately, you won't get to hear his side, but you will hear me dealing with him and you'll get to understand like, hey, Chris is, Chris is kind of right. These people are fucking assholes. These people do want something for nothing. It's, it's bizarre. This guy wanted me to replace three toilets for $75. Yes, that includes the toilet, ladies and gentlemen. That includes the toilet. He wanted three toilets for $75. He wanted to pay less per toilet than you would for a fucking matinee ticket to, to see the Avengers. I mean, the guy wanted to pay less per toilet than uh, a fucking... Uh, I don't even know the equivalent. Uh... He wanted to pay less per toilet than you would pay for a fucking DVD in the 90s. Uh, it, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. Like, it's absolutely mind-blowing how these people think, how they act. And this guy's just a tenant. His landlord is the American Home Shield customer. And he's telling me, oh, well, so-and-so said you're replacing the toilets. And, I, and I, you know, I said, sir, I'm sorry. There's, I mean, you guys will see in the video. Um... There must have been some type of miscommunication or you were talking to somebody who didn't know what they were talking about because, you know, American Home Shield won't pay to replace toilets if they're fixable. That just won't happen. So I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. Anyways, guys, pulling up here to a stoppage. Um, that's all it says in the work order, stoppage. So we're going to see if it's a drain clog. I'll uh, get you guys some video. Clog kitchen sink. Take it down the disposal side because you can get deeper.
I always pull the back nut on the P-trap when I've got a clogged drain because you let it drain down slowly from that back nut. That's where all the water is going to be holding up at. After we're done snaking the drain, we're going to fix this Frankenstein problem in that little mill house here. Got that disposal dropping into the two-part waste. And this freaky looking thing right here. It's just been causing them problems after problems. So, get that taken care of for them. Pull the drain properly. So when you've got your bowl full of water like this, it's better to vacuum it out than try and spill water all over the place before removing the trap. Also, um, I can smell that this water has been mixed with Drano. So I'm doing everything I can, taking every, every precaution I can not to get this water on myself and specifically not to get this water in my eyes. Um, whenever you use Drano, please let your plumber know. Uh, it's really not good. I've been to many calls where people have used Drano and didn't tell me the entire sink or tub was filled with Drano. I actually had one time I went to a call and got Drano all over my foot, actually ate through my sock and burned a hole onto my foot. So you have to let your plumber know that you've used some type of uh, unclogging agent before you called him out, please. It's for his safety and you know, you never know. I mean, if you've got a guy who really gets hurt, it may come back to you. Right here, I'm gonna show you guys how this customer had either himself or somebody installed the baffle tee upside down. So the water actually had to travel up over that little baffle right there to get down the drain. The drain was sitting just like that. I mean, this is exactly why you need to call a plumber when you have plumbing problems and not try and do it yourself. Or if you're gonna do it yourself, then you know, educate yourself on things, watch videos, um, ask friends, you know, do, do whatever you can to educate yourself to make sure you don't do things like this and cause yourself further trouble. Now this guy was a American Homeshield customer, so drain unclogging is done for free basically i mean he pays a 75 dollar uh, copay to american home shield and they pay to have the drain unclogged now this drain has what's called a hard 90 on it the trap comes up to that hard 90 that i'm sawing off right now and uh, i'm going to change this to an inch and a half uh tubular p-trap so in the future when he gets a clog, it'll be easier for the plumber to snake his drain rather than having to go find a way up that 90 right there. Putting a snake up that 90 is not the easiest thing to do, especially if you've got a good cable. Some of the looser cables, no big deal. Now, while I was sawing this 90 off, uh, I was being rather careless. I didn't unthread the uh, vinyl dishwasher hose so i ended up nicking it with my miter saw and uh, now now i've caused more work for myself and i've got to um now supply this customer with a free dishwasher hose and it became actually a much bigger problem than it should have had i just done the proper thing and disconnected the dishwasher hose before i sawed off the 90 i wouldn't have had this issue but i was being lazy and rather careless and you know i learned a valuable lesson that um it's always good to cover your ass and uh you know if you've got a vinyl hose in there and you're going to be doing sawing remove the vinyl hose temporarily and then reconnect it so i'm going to take a piece of sand cloth here and uh Send off the burrs on that BS pipe that I just saw it off. It's always good to do that. Um, I know some guys always sand the ABS before gluing it. I don't always sand it, but I try and mark it up a little bit. Usually take my channel locks and, and run them over the edge a little bit. Just give it a little bit of mark, something to take off the uh, shine of the ABS and give something for the ABS glue to adhere to a little bit more. ABS drains are typically never under pressure, so it's not something you really have to worry about too much, but, you know, 
I'm trying to be more and more thorough as a plumber. All right, boys, here we go. Can you get down in the strain now? Um, you can hear the engine winding down and up on my machine. Uh, when it speeds up, I've made it through either a turn or a clog. Um, when it winds down, it's because I'm engaging either a clog or there's some type of turn that I'm going through. Um, these ca my cable's kind of old. I uh, definitely need a new cable. The Spartan cables are usually very rigid. Um, this one looks kind of like a limp noodle, you know, flapping around there like that. So it takes a lot more handling than normal. Um, it wants to flop around and tie itself up constantly. Uh, I let my friend borrow my uh, snake one time. A guy was trying to train on uh, snake and drains and he bound the cable up once and it has like a small kink about 15 feet, maybe 20 feet out. I kind of like that kink. It's kind of weird. I, I don't know. At first I was really pissed off about it, but now I kind of like that kink because I feel like it helps clean the drains even more. Uh, when I'm pulling this cable back out, you may see it. I don't know. But uh, yeah, I always snake. I, t t so typically what I do is when I run my snake, a lot of guys I notice, they'll hit it till they, they'll run it till they hit the clog, boom, they'll pop the clog. And then they'll pull their snake back. I, I don't do that. I run my snake out at least the, to the main uh, 50 feet. That's the that's my rule of thumb. I like to go at least 50 feet. So ugh, right here we got some gunk coming back. Um, I ended up having to clean this guy's whole cabinet out because the gunk got down in around his bottles. That's another thing, man. If you got a clogged sink and you know you got a plumber coming over to snake your sink for you, please clear out all your shit under the sink don't make that another we got a hard job as it is as you can see guys this isn't the greatest most fun job in the world at times so i mean if i'm coming out to your house to do some dirty shit like unclog your sink please do me a favor and do your part and clean out underneath the sink a lot of people do a lot of people think ahead and they help you know make the plumber's job easier and make their life easier because you know that plumber you know he's not a professional cleaning guy he's gonna fucking wipe your bottles off and put them back and that's he's not gonna you know disinfect them or any of that shit so if you want to avoid all that you know clean everything out before your plumber comes and minimize the fact that if he has to snake that drain you know he's not gonna have to you know wipe up all the stuff that come, wipe up all your bottles and stuff i mean of course i'm gonna clean up my work area but I, I don't like having to clean out somebody's kitchen sink at the same time you know it's it's just come on guys let's work as a team here so anyways as you can see this guy's got sludge just built up inside of his drain it's pretty typical of this area and somebody who puts cat food down the drain um any type of any person who's like putting large amounts of food or food waste down the drain, this is what's going to end up happening to you. You're going to get what's called a uh, impacted drain line, and it's going to be very hard to clean. Now, thankfully, I was able to clean this guy's drain. Um, he didn't have to have it jetted, but at times when it gets so bad filled with this gunky shit, you you have to have the drain jetted. There's no other way. I mean, I keep I just keep poking holes in it, and uh, you know we never get anywhere. So another way, good way to maintain a drain that you know has a lot of gunk in it is boil a pot of hot water or two once or twice a month and dump it down the drain with the disposal on. That'll help force the hot water down the drain and it'll help clear a lot of this gunk, this grease and gunk and shit that builds up in there that ends up clogging uh, or catching, you know, food particles or catching more solid shit and that ends up clogging. So... You kind of have to, uh, you know, do preventative maintenance on your drain lines just like you would, you know, for your health. You have to eat less thing, you know, um, you have to eat less bad, bad shit to make yourself feel better, you know. Alright, so I'm going to start pulling the cable back here. And uh, you'll notice that I do it without spinning the drum. Um, 
I, f- I have found in time that uh, mm-hmm. I used to pull the cable back while running the while mm-hmm. spinning the drum and I think it even recommends you do that on my machine but um, I don't do that anymore because especially on drains like this where it's really sludgy I'll do that on a drain if I can run hot water down while I'm snaking the drain like if I'm running through a clean out or there's like maybe two sinks side by side or something like that or if I'm running through a drain that has a branch line that I know I can run hot water through and clean my cable off while I'm uh, pulling it back Otherwise, in a drain like this, man, there's no way, especially with my cable as loose and limpid as it is right now, there's no way I'm pulling it back and uh, spinning it at the same time. It would just cause me hours of extra cleanup with all the shit that it would sling around this dude's cabinet. So, yeah, there's no way that I'm doing that. And it's definitely time for me to get a new cable. Um, the Spartan cable should never sag like that when you're pulling it out. A Spartan cable should be... You you should be able to take your your drum, turn it upside basically so it's looking you in the face, and pull your Spartan cable out five feet and have it stand five feet up straight in the air. They're the best. They're the best cables. I love Spartan. And their machines, and um, my cable. I just need a new one. Once I get a new one, I can clean main lines with my kitchen machine, my half inch kitchen machine. Now, when I'm running my drain lines, I do things very similar to how I run my copper. Uh, I always plot everything out first. I dry fit everything. Um, you know, measure twice, cut once. Um, I'm always trying to make sure I've thought of everything before I make anything permanent in plumbing. Because once things are permanent, then, you know, it's a lot harder to come back, especially on an ABS drain line. Um, you've only got, you know, one or two chances at most before you have to open up the wall and start replacing shit inside the wall. So you've only got a couple inches typically hanging out of the wall from the T. Um, so you want to be sure when you cut, that's why I always cut when I cut a fitting off ABS underneath the sink, I always cut right behind the fitting. I never cut a little bit in between the fitting, I always cut right up against the fitting so I have as much of the ABS to work with as possible. Um, on this one, I'm using a 60-degree bend coming out of the wall directly onto my trap adapter. As you can see, uh, now the next plumber who comes here can just shoot straight through that 60 on the trap adapter. Uh, he's not going through a 90. It's, you know, it's a little bit of a bend still, but definitely more doable especially since it's not up and down the way it was that other one i've just i've ran my snake through those 90s those hard 90s before for the traps and they're they're just it's a nightmare it's a nightmare to get through those and then your snake is very hard it's just very difficult so the way i've rerun this drain for this guy in the future if it gets clogged up again which by the way these guys push it down the drain i'm sure it will um you know the next guy will have a much easier time with this drain uh if they do like i told them and stop putting cat food down and stop putting food and all the shit that they put down there and they dump boiling hot water down once or twice a month through the disposal side with the disposal on it'll help cut the grease down it'll help cut the gunk down you know they may not ever have to see a plumber like me again and if they do it'll be years and years down the road but i highly doubt these people will listen because most people don't and, uh, you know, I'm sure I'll see these guys again or somebody else will see these guys again in the next couple of years, but at least they'll get a couple of years out of their drains versus had I just put that Frankenstein shit back together. You know, it'd probably be a couple months or, you know, who knows, maybe a year at most. But the way things are done now, water should flow properly. They should get the proper flow through their drains. Things shouldn't be backing up like they were. Um things will be much better for this guy. So I'm uh, adding fit, adding uh, slip joint washers and slip nuts and uh, kind of dry fitting the drain here now, preparing it. Uh, 
for its final set. Um, should be ready to go here any second. Once it's ready, I'll um, fill it up with water a couple times, drain it down. Usually uh, through both sides, the disposal and the basket strainer side. Um, oftentimes I'll even drain it down with the disposal on to kind of force the water through. Make sure that I don't have any leaks at any of my joints or anything like that. And uh, I've still got to feed this stupid uh, dishwasher supply hose through that I nicked. I'm gonna replace it with the braided steel supply line. So, um, yeah, almost done, guys. Here we go. This should be it for the drains here. This is always kind of one of them. I always like doing drain work, so just like putting anything else together in plumbing, it's kind of fun. Plotting things out, watching things come together, watching your plan come together, and you know, seeing how everything's gonna work out, and it's just kind of cool. It's always fun. And when you look how much nicer this looks than that old Frankenstein drain the guy had under there, geez. You know, you get a real appreciation for when somebody does things right. So you can't really see it now, but um, I'm kind of measuring out the flange tailpiece where the two part waist and the flange tailpiece come together. Um, that piece coming down, that's nudging the uh, two part waist there. That's the flange tailpiece. That's the piece that attaches to the basket strainer. And I, I'm just trying to measure out how much of that I need to cut off to drop into the two part waist to give it the proper grade. So that's what you're kind of seeing right now. Still roughing everything in. It's, you know, probably a couple minutes away from completion.
All right, so everything's nice and tightened up, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and start filling the sink up and checking for leaks. Um, yeah, this job's pretty much over, guys. Uh, thank you for watching. I really appreciate everybody who uh, watches these videos. Um, and uh, good luck. If you're trying to do this yourself or if you're just looking for some pointers or whatever, you know, uh, good luck out there. I, I wish everybody the best of luck. Uh, stay safe. Protect your eyes. Protect your hands. And uh, have a nice day. Little bonus feature here guys we're gonna check all the joints for leaks and uh, after we're done checking all the joints for leaks we're gonna go ahead and uh, finish uh, pulling the new dishwasher supply line through the hole that crack up there at the basket strainer kind of concerned me so I wanted to check that one a few times just to be sure nothing was leaking up there which it wasn't um, I could have offered the guy to pay a little bit more out of pocket to change the basket strainer, but it was kind of hard to get him to say yes to the $75 just to replumb the kitchen drain. So I figured, you know, if it leaked, I'd point it out to him. If it didn't, he could wait till it leaked and then give us a call or, you know, whatever. Everything's looking really nice. Everything looks good. No leaks. Finally, the drain is plumbed properly for this guy. And now we're gonna get into uh, pulling that dishwasher supply line in. So here I'm attaching a 3 8 by half inch adapter to a uh, supply line that I had. Um, my buddy, shout out to Ryan at Ferguson, gave me a bunch of key parts that they're getting rid of through uh, inventory. And um, so yeah, I was able to uh, get this dishwasher supply line for free basically. And now I'm uh, pulling it through the hole here. Once I pull it through, I'll attach the 3 8 and to the dishwasher itself. And I'll attach the other end to the supply, or to the uh, angle stop under the sink.
So here I'm tightening on the uh, 3 8 end to the dishwasher. That water underneath is from when I removed the old dishwasher supply line. It's not because the new one was leaking or anything like that. So I'm tightening it on with my real mini pair of chans. I love this little mini pair of chans. Um, I've always had these for years and years. I bought different pairs of these. Um, this pair is actually made by Crescent Ranch, but um, I, I usually have the blue handled minis. And uh, yeah, they're great. They're an awesome little, little addition to any plumber's tool bag.